So you've set up your e-commerce store with Squarespace. Now the next hurdle to get over is how do I actually add a product onto that store? There's tons of different products that you can add on or different product types. But what I'm gonna focus on in this video is just adding a simple physical product to your store. Everything else is pretty similar. So if you follow along and you're looking to add like a digital product or a service in there, then you can take what we learn in this video and apply it to that. But just a heads up, we're gonna go through an example with a physical product. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's say we've set up our store on Squarespace. So Sam store, we go into here and then we have the standard products that have been set up by Squarespace as a template. If we click into these, we can see the style, but if we wanna add our own, what we want to do is click plus or go down here and click add product and then we can choose what product that we want to add for this example i'm going to go with physical so click this and then we're going to give it a name so just say sam's cool product then we give it a description and squarespace will give you some recommendations but you <laughs> just write whatever you want for this i'm actually going to use squarespace's ai tool so click on this and then i'll just say write me a product description for Sam's cool product. Hit right, and it's gonna write me something cool. I think they may have written a bit too much there. <laughs> so I'm gonna get rid of this and I'll do that. There we go, okay. So we've got our product description in here. Then we wanna add some additional info. So this is where we can add more blocks to the page. If we click in here, it's gonna give us this, which is like, what's going on? It's just blank. But basically, if you remember classic editor, it's just like this. So if you wanna have some text or some video, let's say you put a video block in, you can add a video about the product. Then if you wanted to add, let's say, some related products underneath, you could do product and then search for your product by name like this. You can obviously change the design like so, toggle all these on, and then you can add basically whatever you want under here. Maybe you wanna put some reviews. Let's say actually in the text block, you wanna say best product ever. Make that a real big call out. And then we'll add another one in. Wow, the best. And then just for good measure, we'll add a third in as well. And we'll make that heading to so once you're happy with the setup, just hit apply. And then you'll see once you've got some additional info in there, it will say enabled. Then we want to move on to our images. So whatever images that you have for your product, just click plus and then you can upload or you can select from your own library. You can't search uh, Squarespace's stock image library for obvious reasons. So what I'd say is just click upload and then you can upload your file from your computer. I'm just gonna upload this as an example for you guys. <laughs> this is from my new YouTube channel teaching designers how to scale up to six figures with Squarespace. That's a shameless plug. So no more of that. We'll get this beautiful man in and then you can set a featured image here. Obviously if you have multiple images, you'll wanna select a featured one. So let's just do another one. So we'll do the same one, add that again. And then we'll add this because Squarespace is saying add at least three photos to show off your product. So I may as well just add this in and then we can click on here, edit the image. And let's say I want to just crop it down just for the featured image. So let's just go like this. We'll crop in on those baby blues. So click save, click save again. And then we've got a featured image. So your featured image can be completely different to all the other images on the product. So to, to change it completely, you just click delete and then you can upload again. So you can go from your library or you can upload from your computer. Then we wanna set a price. So price, let's just do $900. And then you can select whether it's on sale and then you can set whatever you want. So I'll just do 800, set the stock amount. So if you have unlimited stock toggled, it's just gonna have the infinity sign. When you untoggle it, you can select how many you have in store. So I'll just say, let's say we've got a thousand. You can change the SKU number and then you can add variants. So if I click into add and we can say, okay, options, size, and then you have to add the variants with a comma between. So let's say beard, looks like I'm selling me now. So beard, no beard. And then you can actually have a custom option. So I'll just do facial hair. There we go, lovely jubbly. And you can add as many options as you want. So just keep adding these in, then obviously you have to add. So let's just say wood for material. Uh, Size, large, medium, small. I'm no longer referring to me, by the way. Just FYI, maybe 
red, yellow, there we go. Okay, so these are all the variants. You can see them here once they're in. Hit save, and then you can see how many variants that you have. Then you'll set up your fulfillment profiles. So I have another video going over this. It was published a couple of days ago. So you set up your profiles and your shipping. Then you can categorize your product. So if we click in here, we can add a category. So just do Sam. And then you can add as many as you want. So let's say, cool dude. And then you can untoggle these. And if you want to get rid of a category, just click the three buttons and do that. There we go. So you can also tag things. Tags aren't shown in the store. It says that here. You can add whatever keywords that you want. This will help you connect related products. So again, cool stuff, product, you know, whatever you want to put in here. And then you can toggle it to be a feature product if you want. And basically when you have a summary block on your page and you pull through a store content, there's a toggle in the summary block that says only show featured products. And obviously if this is toggled, then that will show. Then you can show related products on the product page. So you can go by category or you can go by tag. So let's say I want to show other cool stuff, hit apply, enable related products, and then you'll see once it's enabled, it's in there. Product reviews, this is something you enable in the commerce section. And then as for the marketing, I don't really, when I'm setting this up for clients, I don't really do this. Obviously, you want to check the social share though, because this doesn't, this doesn't look great, does it? So edit this, and you can add your own image. So if I add this... I would select this instead. Hit apply and then it's going to show, okay, that looks way better. Then for the checkout, we can customize what our button says. So instead of add to cart, it could be buy now. Simple as that. Custom form. So if you need someone to fill in a form when they do an order, this is where you add it. So you'd click on this, create a new form, give it a name, add form fields. So like, you, like you're building a contact form, basically. So you can take whatever details you want. Let's say they need to check that they agree to something. So add a checkbox. Do you agree to TNCs, for instance? And then you've got option one, which is yes, and then no. And then when that form comes through with the order, if they said no, you can refund it. If they said yes, you can go ahead with the order. You know, whatever that use case is. And then you just have to click whatever form you want to use. So we still want no form required, but you just wanted to build the form. Click on no form required. But if you want to use the form, click on it, click apply, and then you'll see it's enabled. Then you can turn it into a subscription if you wish. So click on subscription, and then you can set the billing cycle. So weekly or monthly, and then repeat every, and then you can say, you know, three weeks, three months, whatever, billing cycle, and then you can say expires after, and then it goes up to 52 payments. Or you can say never expires. Hit apply, and there we go. And once you're happy with all this, just hit save, and then you can either save it for later, schedule it, or just publish right away. So I'm going to publish, and then we can see the live page now. So if now I click on Sam's cool product, we can see this handsome swine is here. We can see the title. We can see that it's on sale. We can see the billing cycle, the price, the description. We've got the breadcrumbs to navigate back. We've got all the variants, and then we've got testimonials. We've got a video, and we've got a related product. Now, just while I'm going through, I've realized that I've missed one thing with variance, and this is that you can change the price based on variant. So let's say we go back into here and we go back to variance. If we now click on variance, we can see through all 36. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So if we say small yellow metal no beard is 700, but we can say small yellow metal with beard isn't actually on sale. And then we can set this for every variant. So again, let's say, okay, large navy wood beard. That's going to be base price of 1,200. And we're going to take it off sale. And then large navy wood no beard. Let's say the base price of that was 1,100. We could then say it's still on sale, but it's 900 now. And you can also set a different thumbnail. So when they select a variant, it shows a different thumbnail. Just by clicking here. And then you can select from your library or you can upload. Now, if we look here, we've got from because now we've got different variants. So let's say we select wood, large, navy, beard. Now that updates to 1,200. Then if we change that to metal, 800. There we go. So that's the variants. Now, finally, the design of the product page itself. So if we go into edit and then design, we can change how this page looks. So we just go edit section, 
what we can do then is select from half, full, wrap, and simple. So this is full. That's what I already have by default. My favorite is simple. So this gives us our thumbnails. It gives us our main thumbnail here. And then we have a lot more control over what's shown. So the variant display, which is here, we can have buttons instead if we wish. The width can be inset. Aspect ratio, we can change this and that changes uh, the thumbnail. I usually have this as portrait. We'll just do vertical. Text alignment, left is probably best. Product navigation, which is up here. You can have none or you can have your breadcrumbs. I'll probably keep the breadcrumbs in for this. Image spacing, 3.5 works well. Gallery width, so you can have it take up more or less of the page, dependent on how you want that to look. 50% is probably the best, to be honest. Content alignment, that means this. The thumbnail will be centered against the text. Personally, I think top works best. Design, so you can have stacked, which is all the thumbnails. I think he, he needs some sleep, doesn't he? Then we've got carousel, like so. And we go back into here. I think the best one to go with is slideshow. But obviously, just have a play around and see what works best for you. We can have the thumbnails beneath as well. Form width, you can see that just changes the button down at the bottom. Click action, so we can have zoom or a light box, like this, on the image. And then finally, we can do hover action. So you can have none, or you can have it zoom when you hover over the image. And once you're happy, let's say, okay, this is the setup. This is the optimal one for me. Click save, click exit, and you're done. So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully it's been a good guide through everything you can do to set up your physical product on Squarespace. If you did find it useful, please make sure to leave a like, hit subscribe, and check out all of the Squarespace resources in the description below.